Hi guys, welcome to the Bright Planet channel. Today we'll be looking at I Blew It episode 11 season 2 where we follow Zaza's story and basically break down what happens when a lack of succession planning and management of money goes wrong. Let's do this. My name is Brad Parson and my 7 years experience as an accountant and wealth advisor has made me realize that people lack a functional relationship with money. I'm here to help. Before I go ahead with the breakdown, what I'd like to say is these videos are not to ridicule anyone. These videos are for education purposes since already this content is on a public space. So I'm just taking this content that's already available by breaking it down in a more educational manner rather than just entertainment. So please bear with me as I go through this. I, I know it's, it's, it's kind of personal as we go through people's lives about these things. But the main thing is because it's already public, my objective is just to extract educational points so that you can find ways to manage your money better. And that's what it is. Now that's covered, time for the giveaway. To celebrate you know, the success of the channel and also we want to grow further, we would like to start a giveaway. The deadline of the giveaway is the 31st of May. So by the 31st of May, we're trying to reach 500 subscribers. Once we achieve 500 subscribers on the 31st of May, we'll be giving away this package, which includes a very nice, you know, genuine leather laptop bag and Furthermore, as a bonus, if we were to get to 1,000 subscribers by the 31st of May, I will add 1,000 bucks with the package. So this could go to one or two people, we'll see how things work out. So how to enter? First of all, be a sub subscribe to the channel, like this video, and also give us a general comment, plus the 5 key takeaways of this video. Really appreciate your support, watch the whole of the video to really make sure that you get the right answers. And yeah guys, see you at the 31st of May when we have made our goal or we reach our goal of a thousand subscribers. Come on guys, we really need this because hey, this is MTN. So, the more success we get, we could get to a point where we start giving phones away. So, come on guys, let's do this. Thousand subscribers guys, thanks. Refile Zamanyama popularly known as Njamme, was an eccentric businessman who describes himself as a person that loves fashion, women, and being the life of the party. He was given a high turnover family business that thrived in the late 90s into the early 2000s. The business was founded by his late father and provided outdoor advertising services such as war murals, billboards, containers, and street holdings to corporate clients and government. Unlike any other I Blew It video that I've covered or seen, you know, this is not some RAF money, road accident fund money, or lotto money that they, that just landed into their laps out of luck. This is money that they actually worked hard for. You know, the father really did a great job to recover from what nationally, you know, a majority of black people would deny the economic opportunities and for him to be able to extract that benefit and really bring it to the family is really commendable. Growing up, growing up, growing up, Zaza had a desire to become either a doctor or a lawyer. But with a lucrative opportunity in the family marketing business, he opted to pursue his education in marketing with Val University of Technology to better position himself in the family business. He rose through the ranks as in 2004, he was given a position as a marketing manager. And three years later, in 2007, he was promoted to chief executive officer and his salary increased to 80,000 rands per month. And that's easily 960,000 per year. So he was already, he jumped straight forward to the highest tax bracket available. So he definitely was paying at that time maybe about 35% upwards to 40% plus of tax. And you know, I don't know if he managed that well. I don't know because at the end of the day, to pay, to earn nine hundred sixty thousand and almost pay four hundred thousand in taxes back to the tax man is, yeah, it's something that I don't know in terms of wealth planning did they consider? It? Because usually, if you're in these type of situations, it's very important for you to have a retirement plan. Very important, basically, to have a wealth plan. You know, um, have as little liabilities as possible save money and buy things 
so that you can pay them off as soon as possible. The company was thriving and in a good place with major contracts with Lotto, Coca-Cola, ANC, MTN and Kellogg's. Jeez man, those are some serious big corporates, eh? Um, it's very hard to believe that all this money was squandered after having so many clients. And for me, based on my analysis, would be it got squandered simply because of a lack of a skills transfer from the father. And maybe he did give skills transfer, but more than that, I think Zaza in his own right, he should have really focused on pushing the company to the next level and then on that other point I mean on another point he should have also considered you know employing people to assist them you know to you know to really galvanize this company and turn it into a multimedia mogul I think they really had that opportunity at hand and it seemed like something somehow you know everything was just on him you know, this company was a big company but ran with a sole proprietor mentality. It was not ran, you know, organizationally speaking. The biggest client, which was the ANC, was grossing over 3.3 million for the company. And this was out of a list of many other clients that the company had. The biggest client, which was the ANC, was grossing over 3.3 million for the company. And this was out of a list of many other clients the company had. Subsequently, that year, the company made a net profit of 2.2 million. To celebrate the wonderful achievement, Zaza and his team decided to entertain and celebrate with some of their clients and show some appreciation. They booked a room at a hotel, in which the party became bigger and bigger to the point where they had to book the whole floor in order to maintain peace and keep the party going. Altogether, this resulted in the celebration costing 430000 over just a weekend. Looking at one of their biggest clients giving them about $3.3 million, one could assume that they were making, you know, 5, maximum $10 million per year. Now, the amount of VAT, let's use the example of $3.3 million, the amount of VAT that you'd have to pay on such an amount, it's, it's quite a lot, right? And in business, when you want to claim back VAT, you need to claim back VAT on business related expenses. And the amount that they have spent right now, I think it's what, 430,000. Yeah, 430,000 roundabout that they have spent. That amount, they will never get it back in terms of VAT. SARS is just going to say that this is entertainment and we are not going to pay this amount. Even if you did it in as he illustrates that he did it because they wanted to appreciate the clients and sort of do like a, some sort of you know special thing that's still entertainment under south and red act rules so that is a total you know loss of cash flow in jail so that was just already a, a bad situation and i wonder did they have an accountant was an accountant you know involved in such a way that you know each and every action was sort of you know advised because i don't see a sense of advice you know a lot of business people you know tend to ask me when you know I, i'm dealing with my clients that is this expense okay should, can i do this can i do this and most of the time what i tell my clients is give yourself a certain amount and that's it once you finish this amount you know in relation to whatever that you want to do that's personal don't go over this because why you'll be you'll start affecting the business negatively because now the vet payable is a re is a very big concern and a lot of businesses struggle with the vet situation because you make a lot of money in other words the more money you make the more vet you have to pay subsequently he bought shares in the business and this came with a salary increase to a hundred and fifty thousand rands per month from 80k to 150k once again i mean easily his salary is around about 1.4 million once again his tax liability goes up definitely now it's above the 40 percent you know tax bracket he's paying the highest tax payable in terms of you know the income tax rules of south africa and I don't know if this guy was really considering the tax planning that he needs to consider. And also, yeah, back in the day, I don't think there was dividends withholding tax. I mean, all the money that he's using from the company to buy all these, you know, opulent and expensive things, personally speaking, 
if he was doing that, but I don't think he was because it seems like they had a board of directors. Either way, what I'm just trying to say is that those personal expenditures would, would have been subjected to dividends withholding tax, which I think when it initially came in about the 2000s, it was at 15%. Today, it's at 20%. So anything that the company pays on your behalf as a dividend, whether it's buying you a car or giving you cash, it's subject to 20% dividends withholding tax. So look out for that. So Zaza preferred buying expensive clothing because he wanted to impress his clients and it made him feel good about himself as well. At large, the family was also into high retail fashion and would buy exclusive premium brands. Zaza would do his shopping once a month in Santino Rosebank and spend up to 150,000 rand. Why people like to obsess over expensive clothing? I mean, Yes, back in the day it was a thing and I hope, well still a thing now, but I really hope that a lot of people realize that you don't need so many expensive clothing, there's so many options of clothing that you guys can get nowadays in order to be, you know, to dress to kill. And for me, I don't want to really judge too much or say too much about this because now everybody has a choice. For me at the end of the day, whatever you're going to spend, have, develop a mentality where what you spent is going to make you money. You understand? He wa <clears throat> he spent sixty five thousand on a bill to impress a girl, of which we later find out that she had an expensive taste for the high life and received an allowance of fifteen thousand rand per month from Zaza. And in addition to that, she was very well taken care of. And it's very important for you to have your financial match. Otherwise, you know you're gonna be just be in a relationship with somebody that's just draining your money, draining your dreams away as you are just sustaining their life and they're just being a parasite basically in your life and it's very important for you to have somebody when you're in a relationship that actually builds you. You guys want to build one another, you know, you don't want to meet someone only, you know, having a hundred rands today and then tomorrow you live to 50 rands, 20 rands. No, you want to meet to somebody that when you guys have what you have, if you guys have a hundred rand, you Tomorrow, that 100 rand needs to be 150, needs to be 200, needs to be 250. In other words, you guys must build each other, you must accumulate. He would carry 10,000 rand in cash with him as pocket money. And when he went to business meetings with clients, he would carry 100,000 rand with him. It's not a problem. There's no crime saying you cannot hold X amount of rand in cash. It's, it's totally fine. And, you know, as you said, when he went to go meet clients, that was his thing. And that's a good thing. I'll say that's one of the, yes, it might look like it's a nice showing off tactic, but it's a good thing because why? He said when he's going to see clients. So in other words, that 100,000 is going to make him money. If you're going to buy clothes, Make sure those clothes are going to help you to get into those meetings where you're going to be able to make more money. Simple. The passing of his father came unexpectedly and Zaza took it very badly as he couldn't cope. He suffered from depression and started abusing drugs and couldn't function anymore to the point of neglecting the business. It's, it's, it's not nice losing, you know, a parent, loved one, you know, and I feel like this you know, really hit him very hard. I mean, clearly his father was everything to him. And, you know, it's just really unfortunate. And, you know, uh, so sad to hear this. But yeah, I mean, once again, you know, the title of this video is we look at succession planning, all right? Succession planning is, you know, you, you hear throughout the video that the father was planning to retire early and he had all his hopes on his son. And it's really unfortunate that somebody somehow, because now, as soon as he passed away, everything went bad. It shows that, you know, the succession plan was not really enforced, so it was not really playing itself out because a majority of the business was still reliant on the father. And for him to be left alone and things to fall apart, it shows that also the investors, like the people that were there present in the business, they were not there for the family, they were there for themselves. And the minute, you know, certain things happen, I, I, I'm obviously speculating here, you know, many scenarios can sort of come out of the situation, you know, he, they could have been taken advantage of. Some people, you know, they knew things and, you know, they took maybe clients away from the business. So there was a lot of business risk and strategic risk that were not covered that when the father passed away, you know, this family and, you know, this guy Zaza was exposed to at the end of the day. And it's just so sad because, I mean, he went through a lot and I think if he had a confidant, once again, if his sister was there for him, 
you know, if she was groomed into the business world, I think they would have been able to support one another, to help each other, to really overcome the challenges that they may be going through, especially after the father passed away. And it's just unfortunate that things were, once again, this business was managed as if it was some sort of a sole proprietorship business. And, you know, a lot of things were stuck with one person or information was not accessible in such a way that, you know, business could not continue as per normal. With the family business now on the decline, things have completely changed, clients are not renewing their contracts, and the business is just disintegrating. With no income coming in, it starts to affect his personal life to the point of defaulting on credit payments. He says on the show that the money which the bank had asked of him to pay back monthly under a new credit arrangement is equivalent to the amount of money he used to blow over a weekend, and now today, in his own words, I cannot afford that. As he renews himself, Zaza is now a hip hop DJ and has started a new company that he is looking to build onto in the years to come. He has learned his lessons and urges everybody listening to his story that money is finite and it is very important to respect it no matter how much of it you actually have. Hey guys, that's basically it. So some key takeaways is that succession planning is very key. If you are making money, accumulating wealth, it's very important for you to consider generational transfer of wealth. It's very key so that you grow up or you mentor somebody, whether it's family or somebody that you trust, whatever the case may be, that they are in the position to manage the business and also organize your business in such a way that it helps people in the business to step up to the plate and actually grow the business as they believe that they are part of the business and if this business were to you know shut down or close or anything like that they know that they are losing their livelihood another thing is family you know you want to make sure that your family has a diversified look if there's a family business make sure that you can be able to diversify into other markets as you take your children into school into various education platforms where they come back and they learn certain skills make sure that they are in a position because they already have the money so use that money to invest in their dreams so that their dreams can come back and you know give a return to the business whereby you diversify into other markets and you end up having a group of companies that your family keeps on you know growing at the end of the day and lastly guys respect money you can see that you know obviously Zaza has definitely learned this lesson in terms of respecting money because if you respect money you will respect you and also people are watching you and how you treat money and how yes you know, some people they will root for you and they'll be happy that wow what you're doing is amazing I want to do that one day it's fine you're doing it but remember now at what cost? At what cost are you doing? Are you planting into the future? Are you financially secure? Are you financially independent? And that's the key thing. If you can be financially independent and still do all those things, then you, you're doing all right. But it's very key. Do not lie to yourself. Having a lot of money is not financial freedom. Financial freedom is something that you witness over time. And if you can last your whole life without needing money, that's financial freedom. But if you're in a position whereby you're just ignoring money simply because you feel like you have that, you know, gusto to just feel like, no, I don't need money. That's not financial freedom. That's just you being arrogant. And it's fine if that's your choice of life. But the person I'm talking to right now is the person that wants to accumulate wealth, that wants to be able to live a normal life or a life that they want to live in a time of crisis. It's very important. Right now, many people in this lockdown period, they cannot afford so many simple things simply because financial planning is a luxury that many cannot afford. I mean, many cannot afford. So it's very, very key that you understand when you're given the opportunity, use it wisely. Do not be carried away do not mistreat people do not mistreat money